the, the little boy who lived next door. He moved in with his mother. He was sponsored by the Mennonite church, this English speaking church here. Um, and he had never had a wheelchair. He couldn't walk. He was, he had spina bifida. And so he could only drag himself on the floor and his mother could carry him. And when he came to Canada, uh, Mario took care of him in this house next door. He was the settlement worker, Mario Bianchi. He was the settlement worker and he helped the mother and the child. Nosotros éramos refugiados en, en el Ecuador. Entonces ahí aplicamos a, a un programa donde fuimos esponsoreados por el Menonita a través de Doña Betty Don Adolfo, ¿no? Eh, Adolfo Puricelli y Betty Puricelli, que en ese momento eran los directores del Menonita, del Adolfo y Mario Bianchi. Ellos nos recibieron ahí en Toronto. Y bueno, de ahí nos desplazaron a, a un shelter, estuvimos ahí en un shelter por, por Batros. Eh, ahí estuvimos por, como por cinco días más o menos. Y de ahí nos consiguieron una renta que fue enseguida, de ahí del New Life Center, en la casa que actualmente ahorita es parte de, del New Life Center. Ahí vivimos nosotros. Ahí estuvimos viviendo por unos cuantos años. En donde vivíamos nosotros, era muy difícil la vida para él porque no tenía cómo transportarse, no tenía cómo moverse y muy pocas oportunidades para él por, por, por la situación en que él se encontraba, no por su discapacidad. Pero cuando llegamos aquí, tuvo la oportunidad de tener su silla de ruedas, poder moverse, poder transportarse el, el solito, poder hacer sus cosas él y, y, y poder aprender a ser un niño independiente, una persona independiente. Y bueno, por todo, es la persona que es ahorita en este momento, ¿no? Una persona independiente. Y... In my home country, there was a lot of discrimination at that time with people in disab with disabilities. They didn't let us go to school, places like that. So I came, when I came to Canada is where I first got my education and I was able to go to school. I got to go through, I started grade two here because yeah, they didn't let me, they told me that due to my age, I have to be with my age group, which was a grade two at that time. I remember being nervous, just not knowing the language and tr how the teachers were going to try to communicate with me. It was kind of different and seeing different people. So all the students all around, it was really new to me. So yeah, it was kind of like scary, but interesting at the same time. It was challenging, but with the help of the teachers, all being very supportive, all taking their time and actually helping me, it was real, it started getting easier and easier the more I grew up. En el, en el shelter, Betty y Adolfo le consiguieron una silla prestada y ahí en el shelter la tuvo mientras ya le dieron una silla, pero ya fue por a través del gobierno que le dieron su primer silla cuando él entró a estudiar. Como al principio fue como algo que, no sé, o sea, pues en el fondo no sabe que, que, yo, que él necesitaba una silla o algo, ¿no? Pero pues como yo siempre lo tenía, el cargado y todo, fue como algo extrañito para mí, algo extraño. Pero bueno, después ya al ver lo que el ser solito hacía esto y podía hacer sus cosas, eh, podía ser más independiente. Entonces, pues también fue algo bueno para mí, ¿no? Y también a la vez un descanso porque siempre me tocó con él cargado para todos lados y... Entonces a la vez fue un descanso y, y ver la cómo él cada día iba siendo más independiente. Entonces eso fue algo bueno para nosotros. And through the programs that Canada has to offer, he was given a wheelchair. And he was, it's, it made his life totally different. He got into the basketball pit team for disabled 
um, players, and he has become a, a champion in wheelchair basketball. You know, it's Juan Carlos que, pues por su problema no tenía silla, siempre pues yo lo andaba cargando, estaba bastante chiquito. Y bueno, ya aquí ya, ya tuvo su primer silla, ya pudo desplazarse. I was always a person that, a kid that would just be from school, home, nothing else. And then one day I saw a teacher of mine decided to show a video with a person who was specifically in a wheelchair. He was doing so many things and one of them was basketball. So I came home and I told my mom that I, about that. And then I, I started looking around. I found uh, a rehab center that actually did basketball just for fun for the kids to come out and try it out. So I found out about that. The person that was hosting it uh, invited me to come and try on at one of the chairs. I did, and then from that day, I filled out a paper signing in that I wanted to play with them. and. And then I moved here, so, and I'm still currently playing it. Después, cuando ya él comenzó a hacerse teenager y todo, ya empezó como a gustarle como más el deporte, y entonces ya empezó a experimentar lo que era jugar en básquetbol. Y empezó en Toronto, empezó en, en, el, en la clínica Espina Bifida, ¿cómo se llama? En Bloorview. En Bloorview, ya. Empezó ahí a practicar el básquetbol y, y le gustó Desde chiquito, ¿no? sí. y entonces ya él ahí fue donde empezó y, y aquí eh, eh, entró a un equipo de básquetbol que de deshabilitado como se llama Rose Rose City Riot At first it, was, it wasn't like a team but then the, the bigger and the more people knew about that about the rehab center that was doing it they it started turning into a bigger team bigger and bigger and so we got then from there we got to go to tournaments so we got to play a, a lot of, a lot of things it was new so it was very like i'm not i'm not i wasn't used to being in front of a crowd or anyone So when I saw, when I went with my coach, my family, when we went, it was all new. We brought our chairs in and there was a lot of people around. And there was different, like, because there was different levels of basketball. So different teams and different levels, what we call them. So we had specific timings of when we start, when we finish. So it was interesting to see being on through all that process, being there. That was when I started with the person that was, that invited me. He became my coach. He, uh, we won. I remember winning a tournament with when I was on that team. His name, the name of that team was actually Toronto Tornadoes. I still remember the name. Um, yeah, I remember that was my first time when we won. When I was in the tournament and we won. I was actually drawn into uh, wheelchair cycling. And uh, when I didn't do it in Toronto, but I came here and I told to one of my teachers who was the, the coach for the track and field team here at uh, Catholic Central, which was my high school. He, he told me that, I asked him if I could go and uh, tr try out for the team. And I, at that time, It was a bit, uh, it was already started the season. So he told me that it, just to wait for next season to try out. He would always encourage me to try new things. So when, when I went, when this new season came around, he, he came up to me in the hallway and asked me, do you still want to try out? And I, and I, and I, I froze for a second because I was trying to figure out what he meant. So then he took, then I, it caught on to me. Oh, he's talking about we, what the conversation we had. And I told him, yeah, I wanted to. So we went, I went and tried out. And I went to, I went from OFSA 
Swasa, all the way to regionals and the final race, I brought gold medal to my school. For me, it was really, really like shocking because I was, I was uh, trying my best, trying my best, and I didn't think I was gonna make it. When I look back and I saw that I was the first person, it was like, wow, I actually did this. I actually owe a lot of thanks to one person who let me actually lent me her chair that I used for racing here in Windsor. Her, her name is Jessica Matassa. I got to meet her and she, she lent me her chair to do wheelchair racing. She was a Paralympic for Canada. Yes, that's what I'm, I've been, that's ever since I started getting into basketball. Yes, that, that's been always my goal, I'm trying to do my best, trying to get to that level. Go out and try new things. Like, that's basically what I did. I went out, I was afraid, you know, I was afraid to try something but I just went with it and now I like it and I want to continue doing it. Agradecida. Yo creo que voy a estar toda la vida agradecida con Canadá por haber abierto las puertas, habernos abierto las puertas por porque eh, él pudo ser eh, aquí pudo ser como tratar sin ser como una persona normal, ¿no? Tener todas las, como tener todas la, las cosas que una persona normal podía tener, poder andar solo, poder tener derecho a, a, a entrar a una escuela sin ningún problema, poder ir a, el, a alguna parte, algún supermercado, a un mall. Entonces, era lo que él no podía hacer donde yo estaba, ¿no? Entonces yo creo que para una madre ver a un hijo discapacitado realizarse, yo creo que es más que, que suficiente, más que pedirle la vida, ¿no? Gracias al Menonite Center que nos sponsorearon, estamos aquí y él pudo tener una vida normal aquí, pudo estudiar, pudo, o sea, ha logrado muchísimas cosas que posiblemente donde yo estaba no las iba a poder lograr, ¿no? Ser lo que soy ahora. Uh -huh. Entonces, por la felicidad, por la sonrisa que él nos da a diario, 